Hey guys, this is Blake with the 3Handhunter channel. I'm super excited to show you this watch today. The reason why it's because, well, a few reasons. Citizen just released the Challenge Diver NB6021 and it's brand new from Citizen and it's amazing. Can't wait to get one myself, but I wanted to share with you the diver, the vintage diver, where it all comes from and it's, it's really rich history which is the Citizen 520110, the Challenge Diver, and this is the vintage one. I've got so much to tell you about this watch. This is my fourth one in about 10 years, and I'm gonna tell you why I've, I've had so many, um, but I'm gonna, t I'm gonna talk a lot about it, uh, but I wanna mention a couple of things. First of all, if you like this video or you like to see, see um, you like to see content that's not just you know, another micro brand or a new release, which I think are great, I love those channels. But if you wanna see something a little bit different and you like it, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this content. And I will be filming more videos. I have taken a little bit, a couple month hiatus because it was so warm where I live. Um, it's unpleasant to film, but I'm filming them again and I'll be bringing you co new content. I've got a lot of watches that I need to show you. Uh, also, I do wanna mention, I'm not an expert in these watches. I am an enthusiast. I've owned four of these. I've even owned a PAF one, which I'll talk about in a moment, but I'm not an expert. And if you've had any experiences with the Citizen uh, 520110 or the reference 626198, which is also the, um, the actual challenge diver, make sure you jump in the comments below. I'd love to read them. I know Everybody else would love to read them too. So I appreciate you um, doing that. And remember, subscribe to the channel. Uh, okay, let's get started. So this Challenge Diver, it really, I wanna talk about where it, like, it all started. Um, well, not where it all started for me, but well, like one of the coolest stories. So this YouTube channel called The Wrist Watch Experience uh, did a really great job of recreating the story uh, from 1983, when an Aussie named Neil Blakers found, an, found this like washed up barnacle on Long Reef Beach North, that's just north of Sydney. He found this like washed up barnacle thing and he picked it up, knocked, knocked some of it off, cleaned it up a little bit and he noticed that it was a watch and the, the second hand was still moving. And then it happened to be a Citizen 520110 watch. And it was actually confirmed by Citizen Australia because he, he sent it to them. They had found out that this watch had been submerged for like three years based on you know, what they saw. It's about three years and it's now in the museum in Citizen in, in, Citizen in Japan. That watch is just proof to how indestructible these watches were back in the day and what a great watch and a great tool watch it was. Who knows how it got there, whether it was a surfer or a diver or you know, a boater, who knows? But the watch had been underwater, submerged in the salt water for, for, for years in the Pacific. Now, what is also really cool about that story is the way I found, I, I fell in love with this particular watch was um, about 10 years ago, before all the 62 MAS reissues, I fell in love with the Seiko 62 MAS. Well, at the time it was about $2,000 to get a decent copy of the MAS. Well, with these, it was about two to $400. And then I started to do some research on different sites, which I'll talk about in a moment. And I actually ended up falling in love with the Citizen Challenge Diver, this particular reference. Um, so I've owned a few and uh, and there's a couple great sites that I'll be showing you throughout this video. And this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video, so I'm warning you right now, but we're gonna talk about the dimensions, how it wears. But I I'm, I'm just wanna to explain to you some of the history and some of the variations that you're gonna see between these and other references and how to recognize you know, if they've been you know, redone or whatnot. So um, just bear with me. It's, I wanna make sure I do this video justice, this watch justice, excuse me, for all the citizen vintage diver enthusiasts out there. I, I hope to make you all proud. Um, so let's start off and talk about, and you're gonna, and I'm gonna reference some of these sites as we go along. Um, let's talk, let's start with the bezel. So first and foremost, you're gonna notice that this challenge diver reference, this isn't really, 
the, the actual challenge diver is actually the reference 626198. And you'll notice the difference between that one and the 52110, 0110, excuse me, uh, is in the bezel insert. A couple of different things. First of all, the bezel insert. The bezel insert has, you see the hash marks on every minute go all the way around. That's on the, the this reference, the 52-0110. The challenge diver only has hash marks between the 12 and I believe the three. Is it the 10 or the three? I believe it's the three. So just that, and then, then you'll see no hash marks around the edges. That's important to understand. That other challenge diver, you're gonna notice that the date, the date will be in red most of the time. I say most of the time because that's most of the, most of the pictures that I've seen over the years. Now, these bezel inserts, if you find a reproduction, you can very easily notice it's a reproduction because of the lack of hash marks, right? So it just, it looks like the old, the challenge diver, the reference 61, uh, 626198, but also notice the loom pip. Do you see that loom pip up there? That loom pip on the original bezel inserts, there's a mineral glass over the top of the pip, so you can't dig out that pip. But if you find a repro, a reproduction one, the pip will just be sitting you know, loosely on the top, and, and that's pretty common with all the reproduction bezel inserts. Um, so original bezel insert, you'll notice, and I'll, I'll try to do some, some macro shots of that little piece of glass over the top of the, uh, the bezel pip, or the loom pip, excuse me. Pretty cool. All right, now um, you'll notice, speaking of the bezel, this is a like a Hershey cup bezel. The reissue that Citizen has done, they did a really good job with the, you know, the Reese's peanut butter cup uh, type of uh, bezel, but you'll notice that these, the vintage ones have this lip right here that go across the top of the lugs. On the new reissue, you don't see that. It's, it, you'll see the, the separation, but it's, 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 kinda, it's like flat. It's, it doesn't have that little lump that you'll see in these lugs. Now, the vintage ones are friction bezels. Okay, this, it goes bi-directional and it, or it's, uh, um, yeah, bi-directional and it's friction. Yes, it's gonna drive a lot of people crazy, but it's a vintage watch. I mean, you know, you pull these bezels off and there is a, there's a wire inside, just like a Vostok, if you've owned Vostoks. It's just a little bit more complicated. I've removed one and I could not get it back on. I actually had to take it to a watchmaker to get it back on in the past. Um, so that's about it with the bezel. One of the other things I need to mention, it, you might say, well, that looks like a, a Seiko bezel insert. Yeah, but the font is really, really unique to this particular watch. Take a look at some references between Seiko's and these Citizens, and you're gonna notice the font's completely different, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the dial. And there's a lot of different variations in this dial, so let's, let's talk about it. So um, first of all, it's a painted dial. And one of the reasons why on so many of these citizens, you'll notice that the dial, the loom markers, they, they're not degraded at all because of that story I told you about how good the water resistance is. This is a screw down crown and the water resistance is 150 meters, but that one that was found is just proof and, and, and you know, helps us as, as, as collectors understand why so many of these dials look awesome. I mean, you can see in, on mine, I have a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, one of the loom pips and the, I think it's the 10 marker. It's got a little bit of moisture must've got in there at some point, but overall, that's one of the cleaner dials that you're gonna see, okay? Now, there's a couple different variations here, but you'll notice that the Citizen logo, the older ones like these, they, they have this like um, this uh, applied uh, Citizen logo. The older ones had, I think it's stamped. It's actually like a stamped logo and you'll, you'll see it's a little bit different where this logo is, they're all the, the, uh, the letters are all connected. Also, you'll notice at the bottom, it says 21 joules, water resistant, 150 meters. There are some versions where water resistant is not there. I've never seen one in person. I've only seen them in pictures. Um, now, the newer dial after 1978, you'll notice that that, um, see the date and then the loom 
pip to the right of the date, you notice it's surrounded on top and bottom by you know silver pieces. Well, in the older than 1978, it's all framed out. So the newer version has this like, you know, the, the chrome piece on the top and the bottom of the loom pip, which I find rather interesting. I don't know why they just didn't keep it the way that it was in the past. Um, also, you'll notice, uh, let's talk a little bit about the hands. Yes, they are Rolex style hands, uh, the, the Mercedes style hands. You either love those or hate them. It is part of the watch. It's part of the history of the watch. But you'll notice this lollipop um, second hand at the very top. It's got a little extension on it. On the Challenge Diver, I believe it only has a lollipop and it stops, but it goes out a little bit further, which I, I find a unique um, difference with, with the, those, those particular references. Okay, and the one thing I do have to point out that I loved even more so than the 62 MASs is the beautiful applied markers and the, 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 the tint, this aqua colored tint that the Citizen Loom gets after it's aged. It is so beautiful. But one of the things that you're probably gonna notice by looking at this dial is it's so eye-catching, it's because of the crystal. Now what you're gonna notice about the crystal that is currently installed on this watch is it is the original. Now I'm gonna to try to get some glares there. You can see the ridges in the crystal. This is like a hard lux type of material that has been polished. You're gonna notice that on a lot of, of these Citizen watches. If you're ever searching for one, you're gonna find a lot of them that have been scratched and repolished, just like this. Now, at the time of filming, you can find these second on the secondary market. Um, this, is an, this is an aftermarket replacement uh, crystal, which I'm gonna have installed, but I wanted to show you what the original looks like before I did that. They're about 50 bucks in 2022 and they're probably and i don't know what price they're going to be by the time you're watching this video now the one thing that i find so beautiful about these crystals you'll notice that the dome is on the inside and that's what gives that beveled edge the dome on the inside flat on the top gives it this, this beautiful accentuation of the, the, the loom pip markers all across the tile. It, I've, I get so many comments on this watch and there's only one other watch that I know of um, that I've handled in person, which is the, it's a micro brand and it's the Notice Sector Pilot that has a very similar crystal. It's flat on the top, domed on the inside and it's a truly amazing uh, feature of this particular watch. All right, let's talk about um, a lot of these examples that you're gonna find. What you'll notice about the case, it's a beautiful case. Uh, well, it's actually a very boring case, but very, uh, you know, it was big for its, for its time. What you're gonna notice here is the case is about, with the bezel sticking out, it's about 40, 40.2, I think, or 40. But the case itself is just a little bit, it's, a, it's maybe a few millimeters um, smaller than that. But that was pretty big back in the 70s and 80s. But 40 millimeter, it's the perfect, you know, Goldilocks size, I guess you would call it. Um, the thickness of this watch, it's about 13 and a half millimeters thick. So it is a little bit chunkier. 20 millimeter lug width, not 19, which is nice. Fits on so many different straps. See, 20 millimeter lug width right? And the lug to lug is 47, I think. And yeah, just about 47 and a half roughly. Okay. So it's like that perfect size dive watch, right? Now, what you're going to notice about this case though, is there's brushed lugs on the top, polished on the sides. And you can see there's little bevels here. Now you'll notice on a lot of examples that have been, that are older, a lot of them out of like South America, Mexico, the cases are completely polished. People have tried to repolish the entire case. It's obviously, if you're a vintage watch collector, you wanna get one that's been not been touched, but you can see how sharp the edges are here between 
the, uh, the brushing and the polish, even though this has obviously been dinged and worn pretty aggressively over the years. Actually, it's not really too bad, I guess, um, this example, but you can see very sharp edges still. Uh, if you have one that's a completely repolished case, it's, you know, it, I don't think it looks as good, but it's obviously it's probably not gonna fetch as much or retain as much in value. Crown is a screw down crown, and it's a really, it's actually a pretty good size crown. The one thing on the new reissues, I noticed the crown is a lot smaller, but this is a seven millimeter crown. It's a nice size crown. Um, this particular example has kind of a short um, screw down area, which I don't like, but I have to get that fixed sometime in, this, in the future. But this one was serviced. And so this movement is the Miyota 8210A beats at 21,600 uh, beats per hour, and it's a 21 joule movement. And it's got like a 40, I wanna say a 42 hour power reserve. I may be wrong on that. Uh, but I've owned four of these. And the reason why I mention that is because of the, the way I look at these movements, these, these old Miyota movements, the, the Citizen watch is kind of like the Toyota of watches. It's like that Japanese car that just will last forever. That's how I feel about these watches. On all four examples I've had, they've all been very strong running examples. And I know some of those ones that I've owned in the past have not been serviced. This one actually runs within a couple of seconds a day, which is a pretty, pretty awesome. Now, you'll notice that I'm wearing a, uh, I have a, a Benter, uh, a, Ben, uh, <laughs> Centurini Benito Centurini, is that what it is? Uh, it's it's an Italian rubber strap. It's very similar to what just they just issued on the, um, on the new Citizen reissues. I didn't buy this because of that. I bought this before they reissued them and I just thought it looked really cool, a very similar aesthetic. It's got that vanilla smell. It tapers down to 16 millimeter, it's super, comfortable. I'm going to throw it on my wrist in a second, but I don't just wear it with a rubber strap. I do wear it on a metal strap, which I'll put on in a few moments. So make sure you stick around because I am going to put it on a metal strap. Uh, also, I'm going to, I want to talk a little bit about the case back and how to read those reference numbers. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I I'd, I'd forgot to tell you up until this point. Um, but I wanted to say that if you like this video and you like what you're hearing, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, please do that, I appreciate that. Now there are a couple great sites if you go, you, you, you dive deep into the um, citizen vintage collecting uh, you know, world. And like I said, I've owned four of these. Um, one of them was a Pakistani Air Force watch and on the there's a there's a there's a um, watch you seek uh, article, and I'll show it to you. That shows you the Pakistani Air Force watch, and um, I actually owned one. It said PAF, and it had the uh, that the military broad arrow etched in the back, and it was like in it was like etched in like dots, but etched PAF, and it was really it was really cool. I sold that because the example that I had, the bezel didn't, it, it was like in horrible shape and the bezel didn't move and it was stuck. And, but even though the watch worked, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll sell it and I'll just find another because I didn't want to mess with it because I'm not a watchmaker. Well, that was probably about eight years ago and I've yet to find another one. And I wish I would have kept that. So if you ever find one for sale and you like these watches, jump on it because they are super rare. All right. Oh, before I get into the case back, I want to talk to you guys about, I was talking to you about the dials, but I, I forgot to tell you about the couple different dial colors that are available. The black is the most common. And remember, they're painted dials. Now, there's a blue dial, which I've never seen ever, other than pictures of them. I've never seen one for sale or in person. And then there are an orange dial variant of the 520110. I have tried to buy at least three or four of them over the years and they've always slipped between my fingers. I've never been able to buy one, um, but they're not as common obviously as the black dials, but they are more common. I've never seen a blue dial variant in the wild or even online. Um, 
that was available. So just want to let you all know that. The, and the orange versions are really cool. They got that Doxa type orange. So let's take a look at the case back. And I want to show you how to read the case back here. Uh, the very bottom number, you're going to see the reference. That is the 520110 reference. Then if you go up a couple of lines, that is the serial number there and the date of, of when it was built. The first number is the um, year. So this is a 1980 model. The next two numbers are the month. So 03 being March. So this is March of 1980. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, let me throw this on my wrist. But before I do that, let me show you a very, other, very cool watch that came after this Citizen watch. This is another one of my vintage ones. This is the Citizen um, 51 two, two, seven, three. I think Fertella watches did a really cool article on, on this uh, particular watch. It's very unique. Um, you'll notice that the hands, it's got this like paddle hand, our hand. It looks like a big paddle. You know, what, what you'll find out is on these, and I'll do a separate video of this watch on these, it tends to be missing its hands because everybody got rid of that, that paddle hand because they thought it was ugly. Well, lo and behold, you know, years later, those of us that are collectors, we're like, wow, that's the coolest hand that I've ever seen. Now notice this really dinky, dinky little crown, screw down crown and crown protectors. Very small, very um, common of this, uh, or it, it's just very um, unique feature of this watch and kind of a 60 click bezel. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm gonna put this, this one on my wrist with the, uh, Bonito Centurini strap and you're going to see how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist and it wears just awesome. Um, and here it is on my wrist. How cool is that? What an amazing timepiece, right? Now you've seen videos up to this point. You've seen videos of me wearing this watch with the metal, um, with the metal bracelet. Let's talk a little bit about the metal bracelet. Now the metal bracelet that I have on or, or that I, that I, that I wear with this watch is the same bracelet that comes off of uh, uh, NY0040, the, just the old pro masters. It's that jangly, you know, um, with a, with, with, with a, you know, the, <laughs> I forget what you call that, but anyway, it's cheaply made pressed um, bracelet but it fits really well and it's got this, you know, it's got this diver extension, just cheap diver extension. There's a lot of hate on this particular bracelet, but I'll tell you what, I love them. And I, and I, I love it like I love the SKX Jubilee um, cheap bracelet. They feel like, an, it feels like an old Rolex and it's, uh, it's <laughs> they're great. But I love wearing it on this watch. Um, but the original bracelet that comes with this watch is not like this. It's not an oyster style. It's actually an H-link bracelet. So if you can find an example of a 52110 or, uh, and I should talk about this too, the 626198, which is the actual challenge diver, um, and you find it with an H-link bracelet, make sure you, you, you try to snag one of those. Those are very, very hard to find. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, so I'm gonna mention it right now. The um, Challenge Diver, very similar. As I, as I said, that the bezel is, um, you, you won't see those loom pips or those, excuse me, the hash marks across around the whole bezel insert. It only stops at like the 15 minute and then it's open without those hash marks. Also, on the Challenge Diver, that, uh, that date is uh, in red. So that's another unique feature of the Challenge Diver. Um, and those seem to be a little bit harder to find in my experience. Um, the Challenge Diver is the si reference 626198, and they have um, the red date. They tend to, I've, I've seen them mostly with red dates. And, um, but they, other than that, they look the same as the, as the 520110. But I just want to say, if, if you get into vintage watch collecting, it's always been kind of scary to me, uh, especially with a lot, a lot of Swiss watches, but these Citizens and even vintage Seikos I've owned, I've owned you know the old Turtles and the old 62 MASs, um, original copies of the Big Crown. Um, 
I tend to feel very comfortable with the, uh, the movements, especially after they've been serviced. And it is truly an amazing, remarkable watch with so much rich history. Make sure you check out the, 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 the websites, and I'm gonna put links to these websites and videos in the description. Check out the sweep-hand.org sweep site. A lot of great information on these citizen divers, the whole lineage from start to finish. And also one of my favorite websites is the vintagecitizenwatches.com website. They've all been great references for those of us that are collectors. And if you have any comments about these watches and, and, you, and share your experiences, I'd love to hear them down below. And I'm sure everybody that's watching this would love that as well. So if you made it this far, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Blake and I'm a bit of a watchaholic. And I figure if you've made it this far, you might be a watchaholic too. So thanks for spending your time with me. I can't wait to share with you all the watches that I have upcoming. I have so many unique ones that are coming up. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of those video reviews. My name's Blake. Have a great day.